So before I begin this article, let me go ahead and first say that this article itself is coming from the Washington Post. So whatever is said here, take it with a grain of salt. So President Donald Trump on Monday will propose major spending cuts. So President Trump on Monday will propose major spending cuts across a range of domestic government programs while seeking a large increase for the Pentagon. A budget plan that's already encountering withering opposition from Democrats who control the House as well as some Republicans. The budget has little chance of becoming law because of a bipartisan resistance to many of its elements, but it sets forth the White House vision ahead of what is expected to be a fierce battle over government spending later this year. Many Republicans have said these programs are bloated with waste and discourage people from returning to work, but Democrats have fiercely opposed such requirements in the past, saying that they penalize the poor and strip benefits from those in need. Democrats and even some Republicans are already gritting up for battle with the Trump administration over many of the other proposed reductions, which they say are draconian and would severely restrict a range of government programs from food assistance to foreign aid. In his budget plan, President Trump will propose major cuts to domestic and international programs that provide foreign aid, environmental protection, and transportation, among other initiatives. Overall, the White House will seek a 5% reduction in spending for these programs compared with caps that were set to go into place next year. Spending for these programs must be approved by Congress each year. The White House says cuts to these programs will help restrain overall spending levels, even though these programs represent a relatively small portion of the broader budget. White House officials plan to describe the president's upcoming budget as having three main elements. The first will be Trump's continued focus on border security and immigration enforcement, and he is expected to propose billions of dollars in additional spending on these initiatives, including more money for a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border before Congress and the White House reached a spending deal in January. Trump led a 35-day government shutdown because Congress would not appropriate $5.7 billion for the construction of the border wall. Eventually, he relented, and last month, month, Congress agreed to spend $1.3 billion to create 55 miles of barriers along the Mexico border. Trump still aims to build a much more extensive series of barriers, and last month he took steps to redirect close to $7 billion in additional funding from other groups. The president reappropriated some of that money by declaring a national emergency at the southern border, a move that infuriated many lawmakers in both parties. The House has passed a resolution that would overturn that declaration, and the Senate is set to take similar action. Though President Trump has the power to veto the measure and his critics lack the votes to override him. Another element of the budget that White House officials plan to taunt is reforms that they say are necessary to make the government more efficient and less duplicative. It could not be immediately learned what these changes would be. Finally, the plan is expected to lay out a new fiscal path for the country, a direction White House officials believe has promoted by economic growth caused by the 2017 tax cut law and the elimination of numerous regulations. So basically, the Trump budget cuts is a, a proposal that is essentially going to cut every government program out there. Now for one, I am in 100% agreement with this because obviously the government is so overbloated, corrupted, and overfunded. And of course, the government just has no idea how to spend and manage money. Now, of course, I don't give it a high chance of passing in the House and Senate because obviously the liberals and the Democrats both can agree on this, that they both indeed like to spend the taxpayers' money stupidly. Now, of course, the Democrats are saying that Trump is going to go after the welfare programs and assistance programs and all that other crap. And they basically say the same thing they always say when a Republican talks about budget cuts and cutting down on the federal government gives to assistance programs. The Democrat and liberals basically come out and say, oh, you're going to hurt the poor. You simply just don't care about the people in need. When in fact, statistics and data prove that these assistance program actually does more harm than and actually does good. But the Democrats want people to be on these assistant programs and to be dependent on them because then they are more easily controlled. And it's no secret in hiding that Trump is only doing this budget cut so he can get more money for the border wall. 
And I applaud him for that. But like I said, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle trying to get the rest of this money for the border wall because too many people benefit from it. Both Democrats and Republicans do not want to see the border wall built whatsoever. And then you have the other issue of government spending and wasteful spending and how the government actually spends money. You see, there was a story I heard not too long ago about a man living in New York City, I think. And there, there was like this walkway that wasn't fully built and there was a lot of mud and people would always sleep and fall and hurt themselves. So this law-abiding citizen took it upon himself to spend $1,300 of his own money to basically build this little walkway staircase thing out of wood. And surprisingly, it was really, really efficient. But I think two months later, the government came in, sued the guy and, you know, slapped him with all these penalties and rebuilt it themselves. But instead of spending $1,300, they spent like a, over like $130,000. You know, it goes back to that old saying that I heard in a movie once where the guy was like the government spends $5,000 on a hammer, $10,000 on a toilet seat. And as sad and as unfortunate as that is, that's actually very, very true. The government consistently spends on crap it doesn't need and it spends enormous amount of money on dumb stuff. Basically $500 for a nail. Now obviously in Trump's new budget cuts, he's going to try to cut down on even more regulation. And that's another win-win on his part, but again, the government loves regulation. And essentially, that is the problem when we the people allow the government to get bigger and bigger. The government becomes over bloated, over expensive, and just inefficient and stupid. Now, I do not discriminate against government overspending because the military has a part in overspending as well. Now, of course, as a conservative, I am in favor of the U.S. military. I am in favor of supporting the veterans and giving them all the, you know, requirements and support that they need. But to be fair, the military itself falls into the same category of spending $900, $500 for a nail under certain government contracts. It's like when President Trump did his missile attack against Syria back a, like a year ago. It cost the U.S. government like $100 million to do so. It's insane. It is extremely overspending and it's dumb. Now, of course, again, I am in support of the U.S. military and I'm in support of funding it. But, but if it's so efficient to where you have to spend $500 for a nail, th th that, that's retarded. You can easily just go down to Home Depot and get like hundreds of them for like 10 bucks. Now, another bad thing about this is that the Democrats control the House and the House controls the purse. And any budget spending thing that Trump tries to get passed on is going to get shut down by the House 100%. And this is where we come to the problem that nothing ever gets gets accomplished in Congress because you have these uh, two stupid parties up there because basically you have neocons who are faking as conservative Republicans who don't really want to do anything and then you have the neoliberals faking as Democrats and they also don't want to do anything either. So now Trump has to work 10 times harder to try to get any border funding whatsoever since the Democrats control the House and the Democrats do not want to give him one single penny for the border wall and then you you have a lot of sellout Republicans who are on board with this whole crazy shenanigans. You know, I can understand why a lot of people on poll are just so blackpilled about this whole thing. And the crazy part is, you know, what the Democrats were probably most likely to do is that they will take Trump's spending budget bill and they would do all these little tweaks to it, basically increase the spending on welfare and social programs and so on and so forth and then try to pass it because the Democrats are sneaky and they're liars like that. But here's the thing, if you had Republicans who were actually economically conservative, they would cut spending by half, they would cut the taxes by half, and that's for everybody in every bracket. I don't want to hear the old liberal stupid saying, well, we need to tax the rich so much more, you know, that th that's dumb. Tax everybody less. Bring down the taxes for each and every individual bracket and you will see the economy flourish. But see, the Democrats and Republicans don't want to do that because less taxes means less money for them at the end of the year. And of course, another tax that should be completely eliminated is a self-employment tax. Cut that out completely. Cut out property tax while you're at it. And then after you're done with that, and then you can go into cutting bureaus and spending and all that other crap. Because you have 50 programs in, you know, the umbrella of food stamps alone. It's, it's crazy overspending. And some of these programs you can just eliminate altogether. And one more other thing that you should completely just slash in half is the education department. Give that power back to the states. Just look at how bad our education system is in America. It, it's crazy. 
cut it in half and give it back to the states. And then after that, you can just keep going down the line of useless agencies, value them on what they do, how efficient they are, and if they come out to be, you know, basically useless, cut them or, or just get rid of them completely. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do spending cuts. But either way, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.